Hi, this is Navi. In the following, you will watch a webinar about the integrated fiber and wireless technologies. This is a topic that I focused on during the last three years. In our lab, we have TDM Econ from Sun Telecom, which has OLT, it has an uh, uplink port and two console ports. There are four ONUs, each one has two Ethernet ports and also we have passive splitter. In the wireless part we have Zyxel Next Generation WLAN access point which provides us with the full access to the Mac layer. Thank you for watching this webinar. In this webinar I will talk about the impact of hierarchical frame aggregation on the performance of video in future broadband 5 access networks. FTTH networks are expected to become next major success story for optical communication systems, where fibers brought close or all the way to the end user. On the other hand, we have wireless networks with their cost efficiency and flexibility in supporting mobile end users. In the so-called fiber wireless networks, introducing optical fiber into broadband wireless access networks helps relieve emerging bandwidth bottlenecks in today's wireless backhaul due to increasing traffic loads generated by new applications such as iPhone. We believe that Future broadband access networks will be bimodal, capitalizing on the respective strengths of both technologies and smartly merging them in order to realize future proof 5 by networks. As a state of the art FTTH technology, we consider Ethernet passive optical network, which applies Ethernet frames and provides a symmetric 1.25 gigabit per second bitrate and 1 gigabit per second data rate. As shown in the figure, typically an ePhone has a physical tree topology with the optical line terminal located at the root and the subscribers connected to the leaf nodes of the tree. As a state-of-the-art wireless access technology, we consider the emerging next-generation WLAN which is able to provide up to 600 megabit per second among various advanced techniques proposed in the next generation WLAN, it should be backward compatible with the legacy IEEE 802.11 WLANs. The major mech enhancement of 802.11N is frame aggregation, which we considered in this work. In these figures, you see the frame aggregation techniques proposed in next generation WLAN standard. Aggregate Max Service Data Units AMSDU, which is shown in the left hand side is used to join multiple MSDU subframes and form a MAC protocol data unit. In Aggregate MAC protocol data units AMPDU shown in the right hand side multiple MPDU subframes are packed into one physical service data unit. This figure shows the integration of EPON and next generation WLAN based wireless mesh network where the typical packets without using any frame aggregation are shown. We note that in EPON frames are separated by a 12 octet interframe gap whereas in the WLAN based wireless mesh network each transmitted frame is followed by a distributed interframe space which denotes the maximum waiting time for receiving an acknowledgement frame. This figure shows the packets when AMSDU in EPON and AMPDU in WLAN are used. Further, we consider the joint two level aggregation for wireless segment as shown in the right hand side figure. These results figures highlight the beneficial impact of our proposed hierarchical frame aggregation techniques on the relative overhead versus payload for ePON and wireless mesh network. We observe that by using our proposed hierarchical frame aggregation techniques, the overhead of the optical and wireless segments is reduced.
This is our 5 by test bed architecture which consists of Sun Telecom GE8200E POM with Technobus chipsets integrated with Zyxel NWA570N next generation WLAN access point. In this architecture, the servers are connected to the OLT, while 15 km feeder fiber is deployed between OLT and splitter. 5 km distribution fibers are deployed in the subscriber site. Using our Visual C++ based application, we set all parameters and for the first time deployed frame aggregation in EPOM. For the high definition 720p video stream and data, the following results were shown in the station. This is the throughput versus time using bandwidth monitor application. We observe many peak points in the results due to the time for copying the stored huge file at the temporary RAM memory into the hard drive. And after enabling the hierarchical frame aggregation in both optical and wireless segments, we observe a significant throughput improvement. We note that these results show the exact values only, while we can see the mean values in the following table. This table shows the beneficial impact of our proposed hierarchical frame aggregation techniques on throughput of network for single and four wireless hubs. For only video streaming, without data transmission and without aggregation, we can observe the quality of picture at the station for various wireless hub distances from the optical wireless interface node. While in the left hand side figure, the original snapshot of video stream is shown, we observe a good quality for a single wireless hub. Let's consider two wireless hub distance. We observe that the quality of video decreases. Now let's consider three wireless hub distance, which shows that the quality of video decreases more. And finally, for four wireless hubs, we observe that the video client shows a blank screen. Next, we consider joint two level frame aggregation for the wireless segment. We observe a good quality for a single wireless hub. And also a good video quality for two wireless hub. But for three wireless hubs, we can see that the quality of video decreases. And for four wireless hubs, we observe that the quality of video decreases more. Finally, we consider a case where both optical and wireless segments apply our proposed hierarchical frame aggregation. We observe a good quality for a single wireless hub. Two wireless hub distance shows a good quality too. We can also see good results for the three wireless hub distance. And for four wireless hubs, we observe that the quality of video is still acceptable using our proposed aggregation technique.